students. One week after a pro-Palestine protest lit a match under the University of Texas in Austin, organizers delayed another demonstration, which was expected to draw a significant turnout. Tuesday night, UT System Chair Kevin Altaif shared a statement saying UT will continue to call the Texas Department of Public Safety to protests when needed. And also cited the majority of arrests to date have occurred with agitators who are not UT students. The mainstream media would have this, have you understand or would suggest that these are somehow students. Nearly half of those are not students at these institutions. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn made a similar note on Wednesday. After last Wednesday's protest, the university said out of 55 people arrested, 26 of them were not affiliated with the university. On Monday, 79 people were arrested, 45 of whom were not students, faculty, or staff. We wanted to look independently into the people being arrested and whether or not they were tied to the university. We asked university officials for any sort of records they could share with us about the students or non-students arrested, but we're told to share that information would be illegal. We also can't access UT's online directory, which could show us current students and faculty because we don't have a university login. As a result, we're pretty limited to what the university and protesters have told us, including student members of the Palestine Solid Committee on Tuesday. I think that's mostly misinformation, um, and regardless, this is a public university and it affects um, not just students. We did speak with someone reportedly involved with the encampment on campus property on Monday, who told us he wasn't a student. You know, I would say that rallying behind a genocide is a, a cause that justifies bringing in as many people as you can. I would... Regardless, we've seen hundreds of people surround these demonstrations over the last week. Though it's impossible to ask each one of them for their university credentials, it's likely that a significant number of people watching the protest on campus are affiliated with UT. The Travis County Attorney's Office has said the paperwork around the protesters who were arrested on Monday is much more detailed than the paperwork around the protesters who were arrested last week. So we took a closer look at dozens of arrest warrants for criminal trespass from last week's and this week's protests. In the dozens of arrest affidavits filed against pro-Palestine protesters this week. They learned from Wednesday mm -hmm. about how they can't get away with just like um, half half doing them. Most appear to have a copy and pasted statement that says around 11 a.m. a group of protesters assembled on the South Mall at the University of Texas at Austin. It goes on to say the Dean of Students Office then ordered them to leave. It adds that at 109, an email was sent to students, staff and faculty saying they would be arrested if they didn't leave. At 1.30, the affidavits say the order to disperse was given over loudspeaker and the protesters did not comply. It goes on to say officers told the protesters they were free to go before making an arrest, noting a few protesters did leave. Police then moved in and arrested 79 protesters who did not leave. This student was arrested last week and the charges against her were dropped. She says this week's affidavits are very different from the one filed in her arrest. But this time they are actually trying to be more thorough about it. So it's so that people can actually get charged. We found her and about a dozen people waiting outside the Travis County Jail. Tuesday, County Attorney Delia Garza said you know, last week there were what she called deficiencies with the documents, but not this week. That has not been brought to our attention this time. An initial review of the probable cause affidavits that we have received does not appear to show deficiencies. Protesters CBS Austin spoke with say they were doing nothing wrong. From my understanding, some people were just observing. Um, some people were observing and um, heard the importance of what people were there for and the nonviolence and, you know, our First Amendment rights. And um, some people decided to, for the first time, become involved. And they plan to continue exercising their right to free speech. It's well within our rights as students and as people in the United States. Um, to have freedom of speech, freedom of the press. This afternoon, the Palestine Solidarity Committee posted on social media that there will be another event on campus tomorrow, Thursday, May 2nd. Reporting in Austin, Adele Uchita, CBS Austin News. It might feel like deja vu. Another round of protesters have been released from jail after being arrested at the University of Texas at Austin on Monday. Nearly 140 arrests have been made during protests over the last week. 79 of them were made Monday. All charges were dropped against the first round of people arrested. Last week, we worked with defense attorneys who initially made the argument that there was probable cause deficiencies. 
with those affidavits. That has not been brought to our attention this time. CBS Austin obtained court records for the people arrested during Monday's protest, which were much lengthier and more detailed than last week's affidavits. So in the new affidavits that came down just recently, they got a lot more specific with it. The new affidavits state time frames of when protesters were given a notice of dispersal. They also list the times when students were notified of their criminal trespassing. They were given an opportunity to disperse and they didn't. So they gave all those facts, which gave context to the probable cause. And that's why in this case, I believe probable cause does exist uh, for those arrests. For that reason, founder of ATX Legal Rob Chestnut says it's not as likely charges will be dropped this time around, but it could be a viable option to save time and resources. I mean, it is a lot of people, and if they all decide that they want to take those cases to trial, you can imagine the strain that that would put on the county attorney's office. They're going to have to face that decision of do we proceed with all these charges or do we find a way to dismiss these things before trial? With UT commencement just days away, the question remains, will students facing charges for their involvement in the protests face disciplinary action from the school? One Texas lawmaker hopes so. Look, if you guys knowingly violate the rules, you're going to be uh, pushed out of the university for three years. Uh, I think there ought to be those kinds of, uh, you know, uh, sanctions. But the American Civil Liberties Union of Texas says people penalizing free speech could end up on the wrong side of history. Colleges have come up to the, the realization that when state officials penalized students for exercising their free speech and exercising their protest rights, that they were in the wrong. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and get the latest news by downloading the CBS Austin News app.